The Incredibles 2. So The Incredibles 2 takes moments after the first one ends. The Incredible family is fighting the Underminer, trying to protect the city, leading us into our main story. Incredibles 2 follows an extremely similar plot to the first film, with a twist or two, but the main underlying theme is to make superheroes legal again. And that's all I'll pretty much say without giving any spoilers to you guys. This is a spoiler free review. I'm just going to tell you what I liked about the film, what I didn't like. Hit you with the rating system just like this one. Breaking down the elements of the film and giving you a final ranking. Alright, so The Incredibles 2, this film has been a long time coming, over 12 years. It's hard to think I was only 9 years old when the first one came out. Yeah, go ahead and do the math, figure out how old I am. It's 23. And I enjoyed it back then and I haven't really watched it since. I've seen bits and pieces of it show up on TV and other sorts of media like that. So I decided last week to pop in the first one give it a refresher in my mind that way I could be all set for the second one and man that film is amazing I can certainly say it was ahead of its time just by a few years as a kid I could not appreciate how amazing that first film was but we're not here to review the first film we're here to review the second one and I was definitely interested especially in this era of superhero films you could tell I'm a big fan obviously so of course I want to see what Pixar has to bring to the table because we have to admit that the superhero genre is pretty over flooded so they have to bring something refreshing to the table that we haven't already seen within the past six months let me go into some of the positives for the film definitely that the cast is reuniting one of the benefits of having animated films is your characters don't have to age of course I flinched at it because of course I aged I want to see these characters grow up like me but then we'd be missing such a long gap of stories you could tell and the fact that this one picks up right where the first one left off and it feels like you didn't even miss a thing is really awesome I really like that aspect of it the unresolved issue with the first film not knowing what is happening with the superheroes are they legal now are they illegal we would think after saving the city they were fine but no there's still repercussions and things that need to be done I'm definitely happy with Bob Odenkirk's character he's sort of the man who's trying to market superheroes back into the spotlight he's pretty much the voice of the audience who grew up with superheroes he he praises them, he loves them, he wants them to shine. Much like we did when we watched the first Incredibles and all the other superheroes as a kid. Another positive for the film I have to say is of course in 12 years animation has changed a lot. And although through the eye you might not see all the little details and differences from the first film, the first beginning act, the first 15 minutes just feel so cinematic. It's like I really was watching a live action superhero film that you would see nowadays. Camera angles, the way you're following the characters, it's very reminiscent of something you would watch in a modern day superhero film. I definitely think kids are gonna love this film. However, I don't think I like it as much as the first film. Leading me to some of the negatives about the film now. I have quite a few negatives concerning the film, but I want to make it very clear that this was a great movie. It was really well done, and it's another classic for Pixar. Being in this world again, getting a brand new Incredibles film, something I think I really didn't want, and then having it seen play out, I want more and more of these films. I want these stories to expand. But with that said, I believe Pixar does need to tread a little lightly. My biggest concern with this film is that it really is a rehash of the first film and maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing because to us there was a 12 year gap but to the film it's a maximum of two three week gap and literally the family falls for the exact same thing that happens in the first film which sort of made me upset now I can't go in too much detail but if you know what happened in the first film pretty much know what's happening in Incredibles 2 without even having to see it the villain is extremely similar to the first one the fact that one superhero out of the family gets to go and do missions while the other one stays at home and takes care of the kid and then in the final act they all have to get together and save the day not only that and I know people are gonna hate me for this but but the whole Jack-Jack scenes, I love the baby, I think it's incredible, no pun intended. I think it's awesome, all his little superpowers and things he's able to do now, even though at first it kind of bothered me that he's basically a god with all these powers. The film spent a little too much time with the annoyance that Jack-Jack brings, always having to save him, stop him from hurting himself, even though he's obviously not going to hurt himself. He distracted too many times from the main storyline, expanded the length of this film, which felt a little long to me, and reminded me that, yeah, these movies are for kids, and they're for them to be enjoyed with silly, dumb moments. The way I like to describe Describe Pixar movies is adult stories told through the eyes of a child because if you watch the first Incredibles it is actually a pretty dark film Mr. Incredible thinks his family died so he decides to choke a woman and lift her off the ground that's something I haven't even seen Superman do
I do believe the film was trying to bring in those adult aspects, a political view of superheroes, what it all means, what could happen. But I think that's where the film sort of lost itself. It became attracted to, no, it's a family dynamic movie, but not all the families together. No, it's a political thing, trying to figure out how these superheroes can be in the spotlight. But that's just my opinion. I'm being nitpicky, and that's probably now because I've grown up and I didn't have those nitpicky thoughts when I was a child. It's still a really good movie. It's still going to be an enjoyable film. It's not Pixar's worst at all by far. You can still give that to Cars 2. I just would have rather have had something that wasn't a rehash of the first film. All right, so for The Incredibles 2, I'm going to give action four stars. I really enjoyed the action and the way they play with all the superhero abilities. Comedy in the film, I'm going to give two and a half stars. Yes, there were some funny moments, but I don't really find myself chuckling all that much throughout the film. Drama in the film, I'm going to give three stars, and that's mainly because, like I said, it's a rehash of the first film, so there's not much new to the table except a few things. Art in the film, I'm going to give half a star because there are moments where the main villain is sort of in your face, and to younger children, being that this is a family movie, might be frightened by it. And suspense in the film, I'm going to give two and a half stars. There wasn't really anything that kept me on the edge of my seat. You pretty much know what's going to happen. Casual fans, I'm going to give it an A+. Cinephiles, I'm going to give it a B-, minus. and critics. I'm going to give it an A minus. I believe Incredibles 2 is one you add to your collection at home. That's a keeper. But anyways, guys, that's just my opinion on Incredibles 2. Are you looking forward to the film? If you have any thoughts about it, please let me know down below. If you agree, disagree, I'm always happy to share your thoughts. Thank you to all my new subscribers. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I know my rating system is complicated, but I kind of like it that way. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.